Now, I'm a little bit confused. I'm a simple guy, but this is a hydrostatic transmission, but it's got a clutch. What's going on here? Yeah. Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and I'm back out here today at the National Farm Machinery Show. And today, we're going to be taking a look at Massey Ferguson compact and subcompact tractors. Because if you're like me, and you've learned most of what you know about tractors from YouTube, then you may not even realize that Massey Ferguson still makes compact tractors. It's a legacy brand that's been around a long time, and a lot of people have nostalgia for the antique or the older Massey Ferguson. But they're still making a full range of models today. They're most known for their larger ag equipment, but today we're gonna to be looking at these smaller machines. This right here is a 23 horsepower subcompact tractor. And it, they call it a subcompact, but it's a little bigger to me than uh, like a Kubota BX. Probably even a little bigger than a Deer 1025. Let's check it out. So I've just been talking to a rep from Massey Ferguson, trying to learn as much as I can about these. I ask him what I always ask. When there's a hundred tractor brands out there, why would someone pick yours? And of course, one of his main answers was the dealer network and how long the company's been in business. He also pointed out that Massey Ferguson on these tractors here, they have a standard five-year warranty, but they have a program where for $500 onto your purchase price, you can extend that to a 10-year warranty, which is pretty powerful. So this unit right here, rated to lift 960 pounds, which is actually on the high end for a subcompact when you compare that to a BX or a Deer 1025. It's got all your standard things you would expect, like a removable loader, skid steer quick attach. It's a hydrostatic tractor, which almost is always going to be the case in this size. It's also got cruise control. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention on that warranty. I don't know if it's just the dealership network that they're working with or all of their Massey Ferguson tractors, but they said that that warranty covers them to come to your location, even pick up and delivery. That's pretty great value. All right, the guy showed me how to do this. I'll see if I can repeat it. Got a left release back here. It pops up. And we're locked in. Took me a second just because it's the first try. All right, so I got a price for this, which was 23000 or 21000 cash out the door price. I thought that's a little high, actually, for a subcompact. Like, that might be more than the deer price. But then I realized the price I was given included the backhoe, which is a $5,000 minimum upgrade on a tractor. So that makes it a competitive price. And 960 pound lift capacity is above average. So another little thing here that I'm a big fan of is the way they've got the loader mounted. Like mine, we have a bracket here where it bolts on. And I have experienced personally with these bolts breaking and coming loose. And a lot of people have. So the more reinforcement you can give this, the better. And they've got it connected to a bracket that runs back here for additional support. Because every time I pick up a max load with my tractor, I'm really concerned about the stress it puts on this point right here. And a lot of times I feel like, man, I think my loader was was shifting and I'll get off and check the bolts after moving that load. And any support you can add is better. I'm getting ready to check out this 40 horsepower. What's the model number on this tractor? Uh, this unit is our 1840E series. Now, I'm a little bit confused. I'm a simple guy, but this is a hydrostatic transmission, but it's got a clutch. What's going on here? Yeah. On this particular tractor, you can actually engage the clutch by moving this yellow lever to the rear position. But this clutch is used to feather your implement up to speed. So if you have an implement on the back of the tractor that requires a lot of inertia to get it up and going, you can engage that, engage the lever with the clutch pedal depressed. And as you slowly let out on that clutch pedal, it'll bring that implement up to speed. So I've, I've experienced this myself where in general, they say you don't want to engage your three-point implements at full throttle. You want to ease into them a little bit. But with my stump grinder and my wood chipper, it would sometimes kill the tractor just yeah. engaging the implement. Yeah, you can avoid that situation with this clutch. That's exactly what it's designed to do. 
All right. Hey, thanks for explaining that. Yes, sir. So this is an E-Series tractor, which is the economy from Massey Ferguson, 1840E. And I think it's good to always have a premium line and an economy line. Because a lot of times what you're sacrificing in that economy model is little things like whether your buttons are up here on the fender and where your loader joystick is placed. Non-extendable draft links, the screw type sway links. This one has one rear remote on it. So we've got our fuel fill here under the fender. Several brands have that location. It's got a basic analog backlit display. This is a 40 horsepower tractor for $30,000 the way it sits. Now this machine has a treadle pedal. When I thought really Kubota was the only one doing the treadle pedal. And this is one of the big long treadles. Let's see how it operates. So now we're in the Massey 2850. It's a 50 horsepower tractor. And this one with the cab that's heated and air conditioned is gonna be 53,000. So we raise and lower the three point right here. And you've got a throttle here, which is kind of a different location for that. It looks like this one has one control for your auxiliary hydraulics, but it can be outfitted with up to three. This is a three range hydrostat, high, medium, and low right here. And one thing that just popped out to me that I find really interesting is your PTO lever. You've got a switch here that will put you in 2000 or 540. And what that means, it's not two speeds on your rear PTO, but this has a mid PTO, which is something you don't normally see on a tractor this size because you're normally running a mid-mount mower or like a front snowblower off of that. And this tractor feels like it's too big to mow with. So I'll have to ask about that. I've also got some interesting knobs down here. So here we have a max speed. Separate from the throttle, we have a speed control. Then we have a responsiveness, slow and quick. On some tractors, that responsiveness is how much coast does it have when you press the pedal and let off? Is it instant or is it kind of delayed? And that's mainly personal preference, but could also depend on the task you're working on. You know, as I sit in here and I look at all the features, and I've done this on every brand of tractor out there. I come to all the shows, I go to dealerships, I visit actual owners who've ran these machines a long time. What I notice is, Everybody makes a good tractor. So a lot of it does come down to your preference for the dealers. I will say it's a little bit tight getting in and out here. The amount of space between the steering wheel, it's kind of awkward as you stand up. But you see that on a lot of models. So here we've got the PTO on switch. The little button next to the PTO switch is to engage the easy PTO engagement, which is similar to what we talked about on the other tractor. It's kind of hard to see down here, but the machine does have split brakes and uses the two pedal system. Massey doesn't actually make their own attachments, but they are partnered with Woods, at least at the dealer level, which allows them to offer those premium attachments color matched to your tractor. With any one of these models, I would love to have it at my property for a week so I could study it and drive it and do a really thorough video telling you everything that you might want to know if you're considering buying one. But I just don't get that type of time and access in this environment. So the best I can do is give you the experience of what it's like to be here trying to learn about it yourself. Specifically with this Massey Ferguson booth, I had a great rep from their company who took probably an hour to answer every question I could think to ask. So that video was a little bit difficult. So that was kind of a hard video to record. 
not because the tractors aren't interesting, but because it was like a concert going on in the background. So a lot of distraction. But they look like good tractors to me. And I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. Let's put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos. And I'll see you next time.